Alrighty, here's my second attempt at this video because the first one disappeared. So, sorry it's late, but here you go. Alright, 9-5 organogenesis, the formation of organs, and all the organ systems that are found within the little pre-embryo and embryo. So this little guy right here, they call this a tadpole stage because obvious reasons, they look like a little tadpole. You can see some of the organs. There's an eyeball, there's a heart, there's livers down in there, I think that's still more heart. Got the umbilical cord right there, a little bit of brains going on right there, and so uh, part of the digestive system, a little chunk right there, that's actually going to end up being the lungs. Um, so, and the, there's a little arm bud right there, a little leg bud will pop out right around there. So organogenesis, the genesis of the organs, makes sense. At about eight weeks, so you realize you're six weeks pregnant, <clears throat> um, you've already got a little mini human in place, kind of crazy. All right, here we go. Neuralation. Neuralation, so we've got organogenesis, making of organs, and then we have neuralation, which is the uh, formation of the neural stuff, so that would be your brain and your spinal cord. Now, if you remember from the last one, we talked about the formation of this notochord right there as a supporting rod for the basic structure of the body, provides a, uh, an axis for which everything else can follow. So over the notochord, we have some ectoderm. Now this used to, remember, be, that was the amniotic uh, sac or fluid, and then we have down here, that's a yolk sac, sac right there. <clears throat> so what happened is we had the hypoblast and, and the epiblast. So on the epiblast, that turned into some ectoderm, and the ectoderm starts to thicken up, gets really big and thick over the notochord. That forms what we call the neural plate. So it's just a big, thick chunk of cells directly over the notochord, and it begins to fold. And when it folds, it creates a little strip down the middle right there called the neural groove. And you can see that when you look at it, um, it looks like, it's kind of funny looking, it looks <laughs> like that, with a little zip line down the middle. And so this will eventually be your head and that'll be your butt. But this little groove down the middle is the groove that's formed inside of the neural plate. Then it starts to grow upwards. And so you get these little bumps right here. Those little bumps are called the neural folds. They're made by the neural groove. And so what ends up happening is it starts out flat, it grows towards each other and up at the same time until eventually the sides will come together and fuse, creating a tube, as we can see right here. So they come together, the outside ectoderm eventually meets each other and then smooths off. So you can see there's no seam in the middle anymore, so it's nice and smooth. We've got what was the neural plate is now a tube, which will become your spinal cord, and then the notochord just kind of hangs out down there at the bottom. Okay, now the neural tube, so that's this part right there, which will be your spinal cord and your brain and also the fluid inside, is formed by the neural folds bumping into each other. So if you look over here, we've got the neural folds, which would be this whole process right here. And so they're going to reach over and touch each other. But these two little guys right there, those, those are called the neural crest. The neural crest contains cells that are eventually going to form your cranial nerves and your spinal nerves. You've got 12 cranial nerves and I want to say 30 or 31 spinal nerves. I forgot. i got to look that one up. And so these guys, they start getting close and bumping into each other. And when they do bump, they help to seal this stuff to each other. And they kind of migrate down, tucked away. So here's the neural crest cells right there. So here's our neural tube, there's a notochord, and now we have a nice smooth ectoderm over it. At the end of just one month, there is enough neurons formed inside of here that if you were to put a little EEG machine on the embryo, you could pick up some brain waves. So kind of kind of spiffy that I, I don't know what they're thinking or what they're what's going on in their brain, but there's information being passed around. So that kind of just pops up out of nowhere. Um, and also at the end of the first month, all three parts of the brain. So the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the medulla are all there. They don't look like what they're going to end up looking like, but they're, they're there. So here's a picture I just thought was neat over a few days. 19, 20, 21, 22. Four days, and look at all this amazingness that happened. So here's the neural plate. So this is all ectoderm right here, and they're showing you the other, the meso and the endoderm as well. And so the... Ectoderm is growing, which is causing the folds. Here's your fold. 
and they're bumping up next to each other. The plate gets pushed into a donut shape to become the neural tube. The ectoderm will fuse over itself. And then here's the notochord. It's being formed by the mesoderm. So the notochord down there is being formed by the mesoderm. And then what we see are these little things called somites, and that'll pop up here in just a minute. So looking at this picture again, this is ectoderm. Here's the groove. They chopped it so you can't see, but it would continue down this way. And then it's bumping up next to each other. So right around here is where we're going to find the neural crest. So the neural crest is going to be forced down in here a little bit, but we can't see those. And then this, the neural plate, is going to fuse and make a nice little circle. And then it's all going to smooth out over. So there we got with the beginning of our spinal cord and our brain. Here's some somites, which we'll see in a second. And here is our notochord giving some support to that as well. Now, the folding that's going on at the top to form the brain, it also coincides with some folding on the bottom to make the gut. So here's a little picture. They took the, the three layered, so this is our little gastrula here. They took the three layers, and uh, you can imagine like three layers of paper, that if I push them toward each other, th the three layers, I'm going to make a little bubble right here. Now, on this bubble right here, what they're not showing is this is where the primitive streak is, where neuralation is going on. And so this little bubble right here comes really close right here. These, the endoderm comes really close to each other, and it forms a stalk like that. And so this little stalk will eventually become your, your umbilical cord and your belly button. But when it does so, as this guy is growing down like this, it's going to grow and push everything in, and then the yellow, the endoderm, is going to slowly move and almost touch, but not quite, and it's going to form a little pinched off area. This is going to become the yolk sac, and then this is going to become your gut. That's your, going to be your food tube right there. Okay, so this tube, you can see here it is just uh, three weeks, so not very big. So here's the amniotic sac on here. Here's the tube, the neural tube, and so on. Here's a big old yolk sac. So as the amnion is growing down, it kind of meets up right here. There's no mesoderm in the middle. It just goes ectoendoderm. There's no mesoderm, so that creates a little pathway to create a hole. Those holes are going to become your mouth and your butthole. So right there, that's going to be your mouth hole. That's going to be your butthole. And then as it continues to grow and push down, it creates this little stalk right here. And this stalk is made up of what was the yolk sac here. And so you can see it kind of pinched off this way. And then also right here, see where it says allantoic blood vessels? There goes the light. That's going to fold over, and that's going to become right here, which is your umbilical cord. And you can see that little pooch of allantois is going to dip down in there, which is going to become your bladder, if you remember that. So it keeps on going until eventually this little stalk disappears, and then all you're left with is the umbilical cord. Now this tube from mouth to butt is going to become your gut. But as you can see, other things pop out. That little guy right there, that's going to become your lungs. That little guy, that's, what is that? Could be your stomach. Um, this is going to, I think that, I forgot what that becomes. <laughs> and then it goes down here. You have your cloaca, which is usually we see in birds. It's the all-purpose poop shoot. It eventually separates out and becomes your bladder and your pooper down there. So lots of good stuff happening. All right, so the notochord, this little guy that is below the donut, this guy is eventually going to grow outwards like this, and it's going to become your vertebrae. So, nee, nee, nee. I can't draw vertebrae. Yeah, it's a really ugly vertebrae. <laughs> you know what I mean. So, um, the main portion of your vertebrae is going to be where the notochord is. So, next to it, we get these big chunks, which I was showing you on the earlier slides, called somites. And the somites are just chunks of mesoderm. And what they do is that they are going to form some structures in your body. But right next to them, you've got two other things, some neighbors. The first neighbor is the intermediate mesoderm. The second guy is the lateral mesoderm. The intermediate one is going to form your gonads and your kidneys. Yay for intermediate. The lateral mesoderm is going to form the skin on the front side of your body, your heart, your blood vessels, and pretty much every single bit of connective tissue found inside of you. So what do the cell mites turn into? I'm glad you asked. Here's a little picture for you, in case you want to print that out. Uh, the somites themselves are divided into three main parts. So here's our neural tube again. Here's the notochord. 
So the top part is called the dermatome. Dermatome, derma means skin, so it makes sense that they're going to form the dermis of the skin on the back side of the body. So we have the other guy does the front side, he's going to do the back side. Then we have the myotome, myo means muscles, so this guy is going to form your skeletal muscles of your neck trunk and muscles of your limbs. And then, sorry it overlaps there, the last one, this little bottom guy, is called the sclerotome, which is going to produce your vertebrae and your ribs. So any damage to these guys in development is going to screw up anything that gets produced from it for the rest of development. So that's why you got to take folic acid and take your prenatal vitamins. So by the end of the embryonic period, eight weeks, what do you got? You got some bones back here in the vertebrae are starting to form and ossify and become bony. Skeletal muscles are starting to form. They can even start to contract all by themselves. Kidneys are beginning to form right about in there. Gonads are formed right in there, but they still need to get mature. Lungs and digestive organs are picking up their final location, so a little tube down in there. Heart and liver are the biggest things. As you can see, there's a heart right there in the abdomen fighting for space, and it's about one inch long. So there's this cool little graph chart, I don't know what you'd call it, that shows all the different stages of embryonic development. So you can see that uh, stage one, teeny tiny little egg, day one, three days, four days, 15, seven days, and so on. So by the time you're pregnant, you know, the thing's been inside you for about two weeks. So that would be here. You're like, oh, I'm pregnant. And then by the time you start feeling morning sickness, well, then it kind of looks like that ugly thing. And then it slowly starts to go into the C shape. And eventually it's going to start straightening out. If you see the head, see how it goes like this, but then eventually, it starts straightening out. And that's when you know you got yourself a nice little fetus. Um, let's see, what else? It's kind of neat to be able to follow the heart as it goes. You can follow the paddles of the hands as they eventually turn into fingers. You see the size of the umbilical cord in relation to the body gets smaller, but I think that's just because the body's getting bigger. You can follow the ear as it develops and it works its way to the right spot on the side. You can follow the eyes and the nose as they're starting to travel to where they need to go. So all sorts of cool stuff in this neat little picture. All right, so what are your questions? First one, which part of the somite is responsible for making the ribs and the vertebrae? Two, which cells are responsible for creating the spinal and cranial nerves? Three, what's the name of the process in which the brain and spinal cord are formed? Four, what's the name of the process in which organs are formed? And five, what is the thickened layer of epidermis over the notochord called? So thank you guys very much. Sorry it took a while to get up there, but I will see you all tomorrow. Farewell.